Hey everyone, my name is Christina Cheney and welcome to my channel. This first video that you're going to see is one of my testimony. Who am I? What am I talking about? What is this channel for? And we're going to get into this in this video just so you know who you're listening to. It's very important to know who you're listening to, where you're getting your information from. And so I pray that this video blesses everyone who comes across it and please like, subscribe to this channel so we can grow together in our faith as one body in Christ Jesus. So in this video, I'm just going to share my testimony. The word of God says in Revelation that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So our testimonies are a weapon. Our testimonies are powerful. And so I was brought up in a Christian household. I was brought up in a Pentecostal church and I literally felt like I lived in church service. Both my parents served in church and I was a part of the children's ministry, the children's choir, like everything that the church put on, I was pretty much involved in. As a teenager, I always had a heart for God. I always loved God, but I guess I, the way the church was teaching me at the time about God, about the Holy Spirit, the enemy managed to corrupt my understanding of God and spiritual things with the culture of the times, with music, with movies and shows, and I grew up into attraction with Hollywood and music and you know the church started to seem more and more boring and more and more dull and more and more stagnant and more and more less progressive and so I started to like crave the day that I turned 18 so I wouldn't have to be forced to go to church anymore. That's kind of how my how I transitioned from being involved in church and slowly backsliding. Sure when I turned 18 I definitely was involved in, and pulled away from the church. I danced professionally for the New York Knicks. I danced for the Marlins. I danced professionally in music videos and eventually came across music producers and stuff and fell in love with the studio, the art of recording and writing and making music. I was just so in love with that world that I just became exposed to it. And what was originally meant for God's glory the enemy slowly crept in by enticing me with the ways of the world, the lavish life of the world, and I fell in love with it. And so I transitioned from the dance world into the music world. I had a label deal at the time. Between the years 2009 to 2012, I was very heavily involved in the music industry. I had some songs on the radio. I had music videos with renowned artists and worked with renowned music producers and people involved in the music industry and so my career was definitely it, it definitely was promising it was on the rise and I've, I found myself constantly in a tug of war with my soul with the living for God and living for self living for the world and so because I wasn't pressing into God my eyes were veiled I had scales over my eyes so I wasn't able to really see what was happening spiritually and so I was heavily involved in the music industry I mean I was about to blow up some would say and I had an encounter that the Lord graced me with looking back it was grace in the moment it was terrifying aside from the music industry I was very much like my inhibitions were kind of like at the lowest point I was just living carelessly it was kind of like YOLO, like today's the day, like live once, seize the, every opportunity. I was looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for the void to be filled with relationships that I was in, environments that I would go to. And it just, it, do, it didn't do anything but steal from me. It kept taking from me, not filling me up. And so after a while, one night I had a dream, although it really wasn't a dream, it was an experience, but I was in space and in this experience, I was in space hovering above the earth. And I was like, wow, like I, I felt the most alive I had ever felt in my life. So that's how I know it was in the spirit realm. And out of the, from the distance, this being came towards me and it was completely blacked out. Its legs, it was really big. Its legs descended into the, into the darkness as if it were attached to darkness. As it got closer, I, I recognized the hands that were looking more and more like claws and hands. And the silhouette was, was like a man, 
kind of kind of bald headed it, it appeared to be bald headed i couldn't make out the features or details of the face but the being as it appeared was very large was attached to blackness darkness and it began to speak to me and when it spoke to me it vibrated like it wasn't like audible words but rather i felt the words in my body so every time the being spoke I felt like a pulsating, like if I was standing next to a bass, like a speaker in the in the club that would stand next to the speakers, and the bass was so loud and so strong that it vibrated my body. So this is how the being, this is how that being spoke, and I I, I said Lord, because I didn't know I wasn't I wasn't really walking with God like that, so I knew it was something spiritual, supernatural, and the being said No, you know who I am. And the moment he said this, I knew it was Satan. And I thought I was on my way to hell because I knew I wasn't living right, and I knew I knew hell was real, but I I kept like turning a deft, a, turning a blind eye, and hardening my heart to the unction of the Holy Spirit at the time. And so I thought I had died, and was on my way to hell. And I began to say no, 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 and repenting in that moment, and and saying no, I belong to Jesus. And he told me to be quiet because it was almost like he was in a rush. And he's like, if you worship me, I will give you all of these things. And he named different things. He named fame. He named um, f uh, fortune. He named people. And, and the earth was almost like it was used as a, as a mirror to, to show me the things that the enemy was so-called promising me if I worshiped him with my 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 body with my being with my music and when he said that i said no i belong to jesus i'm the daughter of christ and then he called me the b word and it was like a vacuum sucked me back and i flung back into my body like i felt like a thud when i woke up and took the biggest gasp like <gasps> like if i hadn't breathed in a and i don't know how many minutes or hours whatever that t time frame was but I came to, I woke up, and at that time I was in New York, and I ran to the bathroom, because I was, I was at my manager's house at the time, ran to the bathroom, and I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what that was. I was thankful that it wasn't, in my mind, that it was, wasn't real, but yet it was real. It was more real than me talking to you about it right now. It was more real than me inhaling the breath right now. I called my mother, and she began to pray over me, and I just felt this like blanket wrap over me as I was repenting in the bathroom floor and crying out to God. And I had a whole schedule plan. I was supposed to be going to Amsterdam that weekend and, and shows and just so much was happening. And I went home instead, I canceled all my plans, went home, I even told my record label, like I have to pull back, something's happening. God is doing something, I need to pull back and, and see what God is calling me to do. I feel like I can't do anything until he tells me what to do. So that weekend I went back home, which was Florida at the time. I went to church that Sunday and lo and behold, the pastor was talking about the three heavens. I know there are more, there's like 10 heavens apparently, but he was talking about the three heavens and he talked about the second heaven being the space, like where the planets are and that being the enemy's domain the prince of the power of the air, and that is the unseen realm. The space is where, is he, where he inhabits, and that's where I was. Um, we know the enemy ro uh, roams the earth like a lion looking to devour, but in this moment it was like I was taken to the place of, de of where decisions are made or something, I don't know. I'm still understanding that. I'm still learning to understand that, that place, but um, God allowed me to be struck in with holy fear to turn back to him and to realize that the life that I was living was in fact dangerous and was nothing to be played with but then also those who are the lords those are who are in the, the palm of God's hands nothing no one can pluck out so after that I basically shut everything down, music down, everything, and I consecrated my time. I mean, I, I fasted, I was praying and reading and trying to see what the what the Lord wanted me to do. And I knew it was to, to say no and to turn away from that lifestyle and to pursue him. And I was, I was, I was afraid because there were a lot of, there was a lot of money on the line. There were people's jobs on the line at the time. And so I felt like I felt very responsible for certain people. 
And God would say, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So he took care of it. There was, everything kind of just stopped. I didn't feel, no one made me feel guilty about it. I had a couple of people like, how long do you think you're going to take on your sabbatical, whatever. But it wasn't, it wasn't pressured. There was no pressure behind that. And so God took me on a path of consecration. Um, he told me to move to California just to break off, break away of the the environment I was under. And that's how I just started my journey back walking with the Lord. And it was, here we are now, decisions and choices that were made. It wasn't like an instantaneous deliverance, although he did deliver me from a lot of things at that time, but it was a walk walking in repentance, walking in deliverance, walking in to the hunger and knowledge of God. And so I share this with you so that you can know that the person you're listening to right now is someone who has a heart for the Lord and who has a heart for, for people to know and experience the God that I know. The God that I know for myself, the God who is the God of the Bible, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph, the God that we can only reach through the power of the cross that is because of Jesus' blood that was shed that brought bought us back into reconciliation with God. And so I share this testimony so that you know that this is this life here is 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 not a time to waste. It's not a game. It is actually a time to decide if we're going to be children of God or ch children of the enemy, children of disobedience is what the word says. And it's a real thing. Like many people are seeking right now for power and they're looking to false gods and false spirits and deception that masquerades as power but all power comes from God and I'm here to tell you that God is so sovereign and he's so faithful and he loves us and he wants us to know him but he also wants us to know that we are in sin but because of Jesus and the blood that was shed we are made clean and we can walk in holiness and righteousness and in peace of mind that is only given to us by God. And so God has the power, the true pure power that he fills us with and that is by his spirit that empowers us to overcome the trials of the world because that's promised like we are, we are we are subjected to the ways of this world, the trials that the world brings on, but because of the spirit of God we can overcome and walk in holiness and righteousness and be the light. I understood, I understand now that what the enemy does with especially God's children is he oppresses to dim our lights so that we are not recognized to the world. Because the scripture says all of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. And how are we revealed? By his spirit, because of Jesus, because of the blood, walking in that abiding in God and he abides in us praying for more of his spirit praying for the anointing that it's like a flame a fire and it, the word says do not do not quench the spirit in, in other terms it's extinguish do not extinguish the spirit the spirit is a fire we see in scripture many times the Lord appeared as a fire a flame a flame of fire and so the enemy his job over the church he wants to oppress the body of christ to dim our light to to make us extinguish the holy spirit so that we are dimmed and not recognized to the world so that we cannot be the light of the world and so i'm here to just remind us and if you're not a believer well pray a prayer for salvation and ask for the holy spirit to ignite your spirit ignite your soul and give you a hunger for the word of god and to undo every perversion the enemy has tried to inflict on our minds that says good is bad and bad is good. And so come with me on this journey of discovering the word of God, of diving in deeper to God's love and understanding and revelation so we can be empowered, so we can grow spiritually and be the light of the world that God so desires for us to be as his hands and feet, as the hands and feet of Jesus to be the light of the world to show the love of God through our patience, through our long suffering, through our gentleness and kindness and being equipped with the word of God and to know our enemy so that we know what we're battling and to overcome what we're battling. Because we know weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to so the pulling down of strongholds. And these are things that we cannot see for the things that are seen were created by what is unseen. And that is God. He is spirit. So I pray now that you know, if you don't know the Lord, just say this prayer, Father God, 
I thank you for Jesus who's died on the cross for my sins, that I can be born again by the power of your spirit. Right now, I pray for, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to purify me, that I may be empowered to live the life that you so called me to live. In Jesus' name, amen. We're all in this together, family. We really are. And so please like, subscribe, share this video with someone, and let's grow together.